paper published in April this year describes how a female orca apparently adopted a long-finned pilot whale calf. A group of three orcas were seen on the 12th of August 2021 with a long-finned pilot whale calf off the coast of West Iceland in an encounter that lasted 21 minutes. This group of three orcas have frequently been seen together over the last 10 years, which suggests it is a stable group of related individuals. The group consisted of two females and one male and they were in good body condition. Unfortunately, the calf wasn't. A deep depression could be seen behind its blowhole and it had a narrow trunk, which are all signs that the poor little thing was starving. It was also a newborn as it had fetal folds which could be seen on both sides of the body. Whilst the three orcas were observed exhibiting foraging behaviour, the calf was seen swimming next to a female called Cedis. The other two orcas were not observed to have any interaction with the calf, but they obviously tolerated it and showed no signs of aggression. In the 10 years in which the group has been observed, Cedis has never been seen with her own calf. The calf was not just swimming with Cedis, but swimming in the echelon position. This is a position in very close proximity to the mid-lateral flank of an adult, usually the mother, and is described in the literature as a form of aquatic infant carrying. Swimming in the echelon position means that the calf gains hydrodynamic benefit, enabling them to keep up with their mother and the rest of the group during high-speed travel. The calf essentially has to make fewer tail fluke movements than when swimming on its own, as it is carried by the pressure wave created by the adult's larger body. However, the adult incurs an energy cost which may impact on energy budgets, predator evasion and foraging efficiency. It is one of the most energy intensive forms of parental care after lactation, so it is not to be undertaken lightly. The group was again sighted in March 2022 and the pilot whale calf was not seen. It is not known what happened to the calf, but I think we can guess. On June the 24th of this year, there was an intriguing Instagram post from the Icelandic Orca Project, which is the largest running orca research project in Icelandic waters. They had seen and photographed an orca with a pilot whale calf. They state that they are working their way through footage and photographs and I eagerly await further news on their findings. This behaviour of caring for different species has been observed in other cetaceans. An association lasting four days was observed in Malaysia between three Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins and an Irrawaddy dolphin calf. In China, a finless porpoise calf was observed to be assisted for three hours by eight humpback dolphins. And in South Africa, there was a single observation of an Indo-Pacific bottled-nosed dolphin calf swimming with six Indian Ocean humpback dolphins. Also off the coast of South Africa, an Indian Ocean humpback dolphin called Michelle was seen with her biological calf and a bottlenose dolphin for a few hours on the 12th of June, but the next encounter with her, the bottlenose dolphin calf was not present. However, in 2019, Michelle again had her own biological calf and was seen in January 2020 with a common bottlenose dolphin swimming in the echelon position beside her and her calf, but also with other members of the group. The calf had faint fetal folds, indicating that it was about a month old. The calf was seen again with the group in June 2020. Another amazing example of this behaviour, which lasted four years, is that of a female common bottlenose dolphin found off the coast of French Polynesia, who had adopted a melon-headed whale calf the dolphin had her own biological calf and was actually seen nursing her adopted calf. So why were Cedis and other cetaceans investing their time and energy in caring for the calf of another species? As you can imagine, there is quite a lot of speculation about this. For one thing, no one knows how often these events occur or which cetacean, the calf or the adopted mother, initiate the relationships. Faced with finding a malnourished calf, perhaps the maternal instincts of a female, whether she is able to feed it or not, take over and the female does what she can to care for it. Cetaceans are not the only mammals that have been observed to feed offspring that are not their own, but it tends to be young from their own species. It is believed that the release of the hormone oxytocin whilst nursing 
may facilitate adoption and bonding with non-descendant offspring and could be applied to some of these observations. But in the examples above, not all the females were lactating. Other reasons put forward by researchers could be due to trauma due to the loss of a previous calf or possibly as a means of gaining parental experience in caring for a calf, thus increasing future reproductive success. In the case of CDs, it was proposed that she may have recently had a late term miscarriage or lost a newborn and was lactating at the time she came across the pilot whale calf. However, the authors decided that there was in fact no evidence to support this theory. Both male and female long-finned pilot whales have been observed with a calf travelling in the echelon position and calves are quite used to switching from one carer to another within the calf's own social unit. It is believed that the calf initiates some of these relationships and so it is quite possible that if the calf got separated from its mother and its social unit that the calf would approach other cetaceans for care. It is also possible that the orca kidnapped the calf and there is some evidence to support that theory. These particular long-finned pilot whales, as well as long-finned pilot whales in the Norwegian Sea and the Strait of Gibraltar, have been observed to chase orcas in what has been described as mob-like behaviour. One hypothesis as to why this occurs is that the pilot whales are protecting their young from being kidnapped by the orcas. Other possible reasons for this mobbing behaviour include competing for the same type of food or as an anti-predatory strategy of the pilot whales towards the perceived threat presented by the presence of the orcas. There is no evidence that long-finned pilot whales and orcas compete for the same food or that orcas eat pilot whales. It was thought unlikely to be because of that. However, little is actually known about the diet of pilot whales occurring in Icelandic waters and researchers hope to carry out more research in this area. An interesting experiment was carried out in 2012 in the Norwegian Sea where orca sounds were played back to long-finned pilot whales. When they heard the sounds, there was an increase in the group size and a strong attraction of the animals towards the sound source. The sounds were recorded while orcas were feeding on herring and the pilot whales were observed to adjust their movement path and social behaviour when they detected the orca vocalisations. Unlike other marine mammal species in similar experiments, the authors go on to say that this behaviour is consistent with visual observations reported from the Norwegian Sea and from the Strait of Gibraltar, where long-finned pilot whales have been seen approaching and chasing, respectively, herring and tuna feeding orcas. A theory that the authors came up with to explain this behaviour was that the pilot whales were attracted to a location where food was being predated upon by a competitor. Long-finned pilot whales off Norway feed mainly on squid, but also feed upon schooling fish such as herring, which is the orca's main prey in this area. So perhaps the pilot whales in Icelandic waters do compete with orcas for food after all. Another theory was that the pilot whales are just being aggressive to another species. Interestingly, orcas are not only mobbed by long-finned pilot whales, but they also actively avoid interaction with them. In one study, the Icelandic orcas' avoidance behaviour could be divided into two categories. One category was regular avoidance, where the orcas moved away from the pilot whales at low to moderate speeds to avoid an interaction. And the other category, which was high speed avoidance, where the orcas porpoised out of the water as they were pursued by pilot whales in a chase. In another study on orcas in Icelandic waters, a third type of behaviour was observed one of no response. The authors suggested that the response by the orcas could be related to group size of pilot whales, with larger pilot whale groups leading to high speed avoidance. But why do the orcas avoid the pilot whales? Well no one really knows what triggers them, and the interactions are obviously very complex and warrant further study. And why do cetaceans adopt calves which are not of the same species? And in particular, why did CDs have a long-finned pilot whale calf, a species which orcas actively avoid? Well again, no one really knows, and more research needs to be completed to understand this behaviour, but it's obviously difficult to do so. I like to think that the orcas, and indeed other cetaceans, are being altruistic. Cetaceans are highly intelligent animals, 
particularly orcas, and both orcas and pilot whales have a society with strong family bonds. Perhaps it really is a case of finding a poor starving calf and doing the best to help the poor little thing. I look forward to reading more research papers on cetaceans adopting calves and why the mighty predator, the orca, avoids and gets chased by long-finned pilot whales. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends. And don't forget to put your notifications on 